Hello everyone, welcome back to Horror Mystery Rewind. Today we will talk about the sci-fi movie Idiocracy, which was released in 2006. Leave a comment if you feel any changes needed in explanation or it is okay. Spoilers ahead. Enjoy and take care of yourself. The movie's plot takes place in the year 2005. The narration of the film states that the course of human evolution is changing. The majority of science fiction theories assume that humanity will become smarter and more advanced in the future. The evolution of humans, however, changes for the worse because they are already at the top of the food chain. Over time, people become more foolish. Under these circumstances, Corporal Joe Boyles, a librarian in the US Army, is approached by his superiors who want him to take part in an important experiment. Joe, who intended to work as a librarian until retirement, is displeased but has to carry out the instructions. We are then led into a private meeting between some high-ranking military officials. The other officers hear from General Collins' suggestions. He claims that scientists have developed a human hibernation capsule that can keep people alive forever. It's done so that people can keep their best men alive when they're at their best and resurrect them when they're needed. Joe was selected as the first test subject since he is the most common soldier and has no close relatives. Similar to that, they needed a lady for the experiment, but they couldn't quite find the right person in the military. Collins decides to use Rita, a prostitute. Everyone in the room feels uneasy as he shows the officers photos of him and Rita's manager upgrade having a good time together. He says at the end of his presentation that the volunteers will be placed in the pods tomorrow and that the experiment will last a year. The authorities present in the room aren't authorized to discuss the experiment with anyone because it is so highly classified. Joe and Rita are there in the same waiting area the following day. Joe introduces himself and inquires as to Rita's place of birth. Rita claims to be a painter in order to hide the fact that she is a prostitute. They are both then placed into two human hibernation pods and given four. Rita panics and attempts to stand up, but Joe reassures her that the scientists are skilled in their work. He assures her that since they will only stay inside for a year, everything will be okay. The two are finally trapped inside the pods. However, when Officer Collins is taken into custody as part of an attempted prostitution ring, things start to go wrong. Upgrade is also taken into custody with him for running a prostitution ring. As a result, no one is presently present to take care of the hibernation pods. The military base has been shut down due to a controversy, and the structure where the pods were located has been destroyed. As the years go by, Joe and Rita remain dormant in the pod. At a greater frequency, human stupidity is growing. With time, the average intelligence index declines. Some individuals have high hopes that genetic engineering and technology will be able to halt this trend of evolution, but the world's smartest researchers are instead concentrating on foolish experiments like attempting to delay erections and reverse hair loss. While the population grows rapidly, until the year 2505, intelligence continues to deteriorate. People have been unable to find solutions to everyday issues like waste disposal for a very long time. Therefore, the trash has been piled for generations without any kind of design. The result is the 2505 Great Garbage Avalanche. And one day, a big waste landslide deposits Joe's hibernation pod in a random home. Joe exits the pod feeling dizzy and uncertain. Frito Pendejo resides in the residence. When a stranger enters his home and a mound of trash is present, Frito completely disregards them and continues to watch bizarre TV. He simply stands up to tell Joe to be quiet. We also see that he has a toilet built into his couch, so he won't have to constantly get up. Joe is then kicked out of the window by him. Joe feels perplexed by the outside world and thinks to himself, so much has changed in just a year. But he is unaware that he has entered into the year 2505. He notices a gathering of mumbling, slang-speaking individuals by the side of the road. Although Joe can understand them, they refer to his speech as slurs and yell at him when he acts like himself. Joe is disoriented and feeling dizzy, so he chooses to visit a neighboring hospital. He walks to the reception there and informs the woman that he is from the army. The woman simply hits one of the numerous buttons on her desk because she doesn't understand anything. Joe is instructed to head to the diagnostic section on the right by a voice. 
He walks to a water fountain in search of some water, but when he does, the Brondo energy drink is all he gets. When Joe asks a passerby where he may get water, the man mocks Joe for wanting to drink toilet water. The world uses Brondo for everything, including drinking water, bathing, and daily tasks, whereas water is solely used in toilets. The diagnostic region is where he goes next, where he must insert plugs into his mouth, ear, and anus. The medical practitioner places the wrong plugs in the places where he has already placed them. After the treatment is finished, a dissatisfied Joe is taken to the doctor. He notices the year 2505 printed on a magazine as he is waiting but blows it off as a mistake. When the doctor shows up, he calls Joe's inquiries regarding his health and responds to each one. Additionally, he proclaims Joe to be mentally retarded and demands a $5 billion charge. Joe suddenly notices that the bill has 2505 inscribed on it. He suddenly understands that he has truly spent 500 years inside the pod. When Joe almost doesn't believe it and goes to the window, he is shocked to discover the city's current state. Some of the buildings are being kept together by ropes as they collapse on top of one another. The city is also overrun with rubbish. In the meantime, Joe's lack of a citizen tattoo on his wrist freaks out the doctor. As the doctor summons the police on Joe for not paying his medical costs, Joe panics and flees the facility. Joe has woken up to a world in disaster, the voice narrating the scene says. A vast dust ball has decimated all food sources, the economy is in dire need of repair, and the top movie in the nation is ass. He watches the Oscar-winning film, but all he sees is someone's behind for an uninterrupted 90 minutes. He is detained overnight for being unscannable and brought before a judge. He is then assigned a lawyer there, who just so happens to be Frito Pendejo, the man Joe initially met in 2505. He is made fun of by Frito while the court laughs. Joe makes a persuasive argument and explains why he cannot be scanned, but the attorneys and court merely insult him. Finally, the judge finds him guilty and jail time is enforced. Rita emerges from the pod at the same time and is attempting to get in touch with her manager and boyfriend Upgrade. She tries to call him, but the phone demands $2,000 before she can do so. Just then, a man approaches her, and she fools him into giving her his money. Joe is also brought to a facility that uses automated tattooing, where residents receive the identity tattoo that makes them scannable. When the machine requests his name, Joe begins to explain that he is unsure of what is happening. The machine interprets his name as not sure as a result and tattoos it on his wrist. His immediate surroundings begin referring to him as not sure. Then, he is brought in for an amplitude and IQ test while being quizzed on fundamental addition. Joe is startled to observe people around him who are unable to understand forms as he correctly responds to each question. He is then brought to the prison. He starts to understand that everyone in the modern world is foolish at last. He therefore informs the guard that he is expected to leave custody today. The poor guard lets him leave, but the alarms detect that an inmate has escaped, and the police pursue him through the neighborhood. Joe finds a way to get away from them and returns to Frito's home. He asks Frito for assistance in locating a time machine because he thinks that one has been built during the last 500 years. Although Frito is unwilling to assist Joe, Joe convinces him by promising to pay him $8 billion in exchange for his assistance. Frito eventually admits that he is aware of the location of the time machine. The police arrive at the door shortly after searching for Joe. The two head to the museum after escaping out the window. As they move forward, they encounter Rita, who is still defrauding the same man. While still unaware that Upgrade has already passed away, Rita gets into the car and worries that he would come after her for the money she owes him. Joe's wrist is scanned as they are moving along and the police are informed of his location. They exit the vehicle when the battery dies. The police then approach the car and begin to fire at it. Soon, several join in and the fighting begins. In an effort to reach the time machine, Joe, Frito, and Rita escape. Joe then takes the two to Costco which is now the center of all trades. He even claims to have studied law in Costco. Rita uses the restroom while they wait for the metro. Before she comes back, Joe's wrist is unintentionally scanned alerting everyone to the presence of a thief. Frito boards the metro when it arrives, but Joe waits for Rita only to be arrested by the police. But this time, 
Rather than being brought to jail, he is transported to the White House. A bewildered Joe runs across President Camacho and his secretaries there. Camacho makes fun of him by remarking that he imagined Joe's head to be larger due to his intelligence. All of them were startled by Joe's IQ score on the jail IQ test because it was the highest one they had ever seen. Joe gets appointed as the next secretary of the interior by the president as a result of his intelligence. They also proclaim Joe to be the world's brightest man, which surprises Joe. Everyone then makes their way to the House of Representatives, where the president declares that their new secretary of the interior Mr. Not Show will deal with the issues of food scarcity and dust storms. He also guarantees that if he finds a solution, Joe's prison sentence would be lifted. Following that, the secretaries ask Joe to offer something insightful during a cabinet meeting. Joe uses a few random, complex words to convince them that he is intelligent. Once he has the secretaries preoccupied, Joe instructs Frito to sketch a map of where the time machine is located. Later, he leads them to a field intended for agricultural production. Rita might be able to assist them with the crops, so he also asks them to get her. Now that everyone has arrived at the field, Frito sneakily gives Joe the map. Rita shows up at the same moment. Joe pulls her aside with the intention of using the map to flee. When he discovers Frito's map is nothing more than a line, his scheme is doomed. Joe then understands that people have been using the energy drink Brondo to water the crops. He calls a cabinet meeting to discuss switching to water from Brondo. The secretaries think his idea is terrible. He merely informs them that he can communicate with plants and that they require water rather than trying to argue with them. Joe may not be aware that the energy drink had caused salt to accumulate on topsoil, killing plants and triggering dust storms. He is therefore truly resolving their issues. Everything goes according to plan for a few days. But due to the decreased production, the stock of the energy drink Brondo soon falls to nothing. The result is that the unemployment rate is 50%. Outside the White House, they riot. According to the report, Joe was charged for causing unemployment and found guilty. He is given a one-night rehabilitation term. In the modern world, Rehabilitation takes the form of a big truck chasing a criminal through an arena while an audience cheers for the truck. The criminal's death usually brings the rehabilitation to an end. Rita unhappily returns to the White House in preparation for her trip to the time machine with Frito as Joe is taken to the arena. National television carries the rehabilitation. Joe is driving about in a small automobile while being pursued by a huge killer truck. Rita sees a rose plant blooming outside at that very moment. She asks Frito to drive her to the arena after realizing that Joe's suggestion to water the plants had been successful. She intends to air the crops on television in order to have Joe's punishment reversed. Joe is still attempting to escape the death vehicle at this time. Rita arrives on schedule and offers to pay a cameraman to accompany Frito and photograph the crops as they grow. She then goes to the control panel in the monitoring room and takes it over. Finally reaching the field, Frido records the crops. The video is shown on the big screen. When President Camacho sees this, he spares Joe's life and reverses his sentence, which causes the crowd to roar in applause. Everyone is currently enjoying a house party in the White House. Rita admits that she prefers the future and does not want to go back home. Joe is shocked, but he doesn't try to force her to accompany him. As they say their final goodbyes, the president summons Joe to the stage and appoints him as the new vice president. Joe consents to remain in 2505 because everyone is looking at him with optimism. The time machine is then described as a foolish ride by one guy. When Joe is brought to the device by Frito, it is eventually made clear that the time machine is just a kid's ride. A few months pass before the scene is cut off, and Joe has been elected President of the United States, with Rita becoming his wife and First Lady. If you like the video subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and click on like to help the channel out. Thank you and take care.